Can a hitman also be a serial killer? For this question, we will examine the life of Richard Kuklinski, otherwise known as the Iceman. A man who made a living pirating both Disney and adult films, and as a side hustle, allegedly murdered around 200 people. In the mid-1960s, Richard Kuklinski worked at a Manhattan film lab, but wasn't bringing in the kind of money he needed. So he began making bootleg copies of animated Disney films to sell. But Richard soon discovered a gainful market for tapes from the adult film world, and that pirating copies of Mary's Poppin was a bit more lucrative than selling copies of Mary Poppins. Richard allegedly began pirating these adult films for the Gambino crime family, and soon enough became an enforcer for the mob, making sure debts were paid off through violence and murder. Richard was a jack of all trades when it came to killing. He had no preference for a weapon or style. This made him even harder to catch. He used handguns and crossbows, sawed off shotguns, blunt objects, knives, and cyanide. He denied ever using a chainsaw because that would leave pieces of meat all over my shirt. Why would I want to ruin a good shirt? Richard would sometimes administer poison to his targets through injection, placing it in people's food, spraying it in people's faces, or by simply spilling it onto a victim's skin. But Richard was an impatient man, and on more than one occasion, the poison was a bit too slow to kick in. So he resorted to using a crowbar or gun to help the medicine go down, so as to get on with his busy day. He earned the nickname the Iceman because he would occasionally place his murder victims in freezers and leave them there for years until he dumped the bodies. This threw off investigators who could not figure out time of death because they'd been frozen. Eventually, Richard came to the attention of law enforcement, and an 18-month undercover operation led to his arrest in 1986. In 1988, he was convicted of four murders and sentenced to life. In 2003, he received an additional 30-year sentence after confessing to the murder of a police officer. Over the course of his 30-year career, Richard claimed to have killed over 200 people. Law enforcement and organized crime experts have expressed skepticism when it comes to his mafia tie claims. So what was his childhood like? Richard's father, Stanley, was an alcoholic who beat everyone in the family regularly. His mother, Anne, Anna also beat Richard with broom handles, sometimes breaking the handles on his body during the assaults. In 1940, Stanley beat Richard's younger brother Florian to death. His parents hid the cause of death from the authorities, claiming the child had fallen down a flight of stairs. In 1970, Richard's brother Joseph was convicted of SAing a 12-year-old girl and murdering her by throwing her and her dog off the top of a five-story building. When asked about his brother's crimes, Richard replied, We come from the same father. And abusive parents weren't Richard's only difficulty. Because of his small size and insecurities, he was an easy target for bullies. And after years of torment, when Richard was 14, he got his revenge on the neighborhood bully Charlie Lane by beating him to death with a wooden dowel. After Richard killed him, he cut off Charlie's fingers with a hatchet and pulled his teeth out with pliers to prevent him from being identified. In a later interview, he noted, I surprised all the bullies when I started giving the beatings, and that's when I learned it's better to give than receive. By the time he met Barbara in 1961, he reportedly already murdered 65 people. Barbara described his behavior as alternating between Good Richie and Bad Richie. Good Richie was a loving husband, father, and hardworking provider, albeit through selling pirated copies of Mickey Mouse and Debbie Does Dallas. In contrast, Bad Richie was prone to unpredictable fits of rage. During these periods, he smashed furniture and was physically abusive to his wife. He broke her nose three times and once tried to run her over with his car. He was emotional abusive towards his children and killed his daughter's dog right in front of her to punish her for coming home late. Barbara once told Richard she wanted to leave. He responded by silently sticking her from behind with a hunting knife, so sharp she didn't even feel the blade go in. He told her that if she tried to leave, he would kill her entire family. Barbara was allegedly unaware of his illegal activities, though sometimes questioned their lavish lifestyle and the amount of cash he always had on him. During his sentence in 2005, he was diagnosed with Kawasaki disease though he asked doctors to revive him if he developed cardiopulmonary arrest to ask if she wished to rescind the instruction. Barbara had signed a do not resuscitate order and a week before Richard's death, the hospital called Barbara, but she politely declined. So would Richard Kuklinski be considered a serial killer or a hitman? 
By definition, a serial killer is a person who kills three or more people, with the murders taking place over more than a month and include a significant period of time in between the murders. A hitman is a professional killer who gets paid for taking the lives of specific people. The difference is, unlike serial killers, hitmen don't choose their victims. Someone else does. But Richard Kuklinski killed for others and for himself. So if he wasn't lying about the mob stuff, he'd technically be both. In one of his last interviews with renowned forensic psychiatrist Park Dietz. Richard admitted, I'm probably the loneliest person in the world because I have nothing I care for. And since there's no love in my life, I must have something to replace it. So I replace it with hate. Constant hate. A constant reminder to hate. That's all I'm left with. To which Dietz replied, that's all you started with too. Then I've come full circle.